Yo, yo. Can y'all hear the game? It's kind of weird. It didn't give me the option to share the game uh, audio. Oh, well, it would probably be distracting anyways. What's up? I'm so freaking sick of people on Twitter. I I knew I shouldn't have done it. I talked about the Iowa versus LSU basketball game. And, of course, I'm rooting for Iowa, right? I'm That's where I live. It's where I've lived my whole life. No, it's not true. I've lived in Wisconsin most of my life. <laughs> it's where I live now. It's where I was born. I've been an Iowa Hawkeyes fan my whole life. And, <clears throat> you know, because I'm rooting for the Iowa Hawkeyes team, which is mostly a white team because it's located in the Midwest, um, and they were playing LSU, which is has more black players. There are leftists calling me racist. So I should have seen this one coming. Because there was an Iowa player who did the John Cena, right? She got she was the first player in college basketball national championship history to do the UK or not yet. Yeah, she was the first one to do the celebration, but she was the first person to get back to back 40 point games and also got like 10 rebounds and 10. I don't know. I don't really get basketball triple double or whatever, but she got 40 points twice. And then in the championship game that they lost, she got 30 points. Right. And this girl from the LSU team hit the you can't see me on her. She did Caitlin Clark's celebration, like stole her celebration, creates drama, creates stuff for the fans to talk about. I think it's cool. But what I said was because that that girl who did it, the Caitlin Clark got 15 points in the championship game, one half of the point of Caitlin Clark. So I said in an individual sport. If you got 15 less points than somebody, you wouldn't be able to hit them with this. And that's why I can only do individual sports. I can only do wrestling. And that is what people are saying. Only a few people, but that is what a few leftists are saying is racist. It's racist that I said the girl who got half as many points as Caitlin Clark in an individual sport wouldn't be able to flex on her. In way to way to inject race into every fun sports debate and find a way to seriously call everyone a racist. All right, I'm moving on. Moving on. I had to rant about that. We got two people in the chat already. That's more than I thought we were going to get. Streaming exclusively to Twitch for these. I think I'll probably make a gaming YouTube. Um, or I can upload videos and stuff. But eventually I'm going to have to figure out how to share the audio here because final fantasy 10 has a storyline and vo it's voice acted so we're gonna have to figure out how that works and now my screen's totally gone so maybe i should just share the window or instead of the window maybe i should just share the entire screen yep i think that's gonna be the move We'll just have to make this full screen eventually. What's up, people in the chat? Who's in the chat? Jacob's probably out there. Um, tomorrow I will do a regular stream again. Just a normal one. Um, I'm not going to get in the habit of just doing only gaming streams, but today I'm freaking tired uh, from doing two-a-days every day. And... I just wanted to play some video games, and I'm like, hey, might as well stream it. Yo, what up, grah? <laughs> grah. What political topics do we want to talk about, family? Anything going on in the news that, that people are uh, keeping their eye on? How do I make this full screen? How do I do it, Yuna? Kimari, Yuna, Oren, Waka, Yuna. What is the engineer girl's name? I can't remember. And Titus. Titus. <laughs> There's some goofy moments in this game. There's a famous moment where him and the girl Yuna... 
I think it's Yuna. They're fake laughing. He's like, all you got to do when you're sad is fake laughing. Like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's super silly. But the voice acting for the time, for 2010 or whenever this came out, was really good. And I had it on PS2. Um, and then this is also the remastered version that I just bought here. Um, you're welcome for spending my hard-earned money on our gaming streams. Just kidding, but I'm excited to see how the HD remaster looks. Uh, new government contract with Lockheed Martin for 4.5 billion announced today. That really is the only news I've seen of. Yeah, I was watching um, Dan Kovalik, who's pretty great, uh, who recently went to the Donbass um, to hang out and, and show, you know, what life was like. Oh, what sphere grid should we use? Um, hold on. I got to look up the difference between these, but he also shared that Lockheed Martin had made just like their profits have gone up like 50 some percent or even more. No, it's more than that. Their profits have gone way up since the war in Ukraine started. It's just like, it just shows what it's all about. Like everybody knows it too. Everybody knows it too. Even I even see less liberals talking about it. You know, how horrible Putin is and how we need to back Ukraine. Because everyone recognizes now it, it was for Lockheed Martin. Um, I'm just going to go with the standard sphere grid. I'm not that smart. The sphere grid. Can't switch in game. Whatever. I have a feeling the expert sphere grid would just allow you to mess it up. And <laughs> screw it up. And like the sphere grid gives you a lot of options with, with where to go with your skill set anyways. Arranged or I was listening to this soundtrack the other day when I was working out. <laughs> I was in the sauna. I was like, oh, 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 oh. praise be to Yevin. Anyone ever played this game? <laughs> um so yeah, new contract with Lockheed. Not surprised. What I'm interested in is where does Lockheed and Martin and all these um weapons manufacturers where do they actually make their weapons do we have to sit through this intro again where did it um because the u.s was begging some european countries to send more guns we do have to sit through this intro again they were begging some european countries to send more guns because the u.s was running out um as and if you think about the u.s's productive base and the way our country's been deindustrialized for the past however many years. It's like, do we even have the capacity to maintain a super long term war against Russia? You know, who's been, and this is why it's like, like Russia and China have been building up their productive base for years, which has just been pissing the US off, making the US grumpy. Um, and then allowing Russia to forge more economic ties with traditional U.S. allies in Europe. Um, but now, with the war in Ukraine, there's a direct conflict between Russia, China, and the U.S. Like a direct military conflict. And it's like, is Russia and China's base already, or productive base already big enough to where the U.S. can't win this kind of conflict? They can't win this kind of war? Um, listen to my story. And so far, it seems like yes. Uh, but I'm just really interested to see what happens after the war in Ukraine. Honestly, I am really interested to see. Um, I'm really interested to see what comes next. I'm really interested to see how I think how it's going to end up is Ukraine's probably going to have to settle. I mean, sorry, Russia's probably going to have to settle for Zelensky still being in power. He'll probably still have to be the president. Um, cause the West isn't going to budge on that. And then I think the Donbass, like Lugansk, Donetsk and the other breakaway republics will become part of Russia. And I think Crimea stays part of Russia. And right now the U S is saying that, um, we're about to see some blitz ball. I wish I could get this to full screen because this is a cool scene in the, in final fantasy. Uh, this is a really cool cinematic 
I'm trying to get it full screen. Um, but yeah, overall, the U.S. is just dumping tons of money into it, and it's like everybody sees. I was talking to one of I talked to one of my Greco wrestlers every day about this stuff. He kind of a used to be a conservative, but now he's starting to question some of the conservative stuff, and he likes what I'm saying and asks about Marxism a lot. And he just doesn't understand it. He's like, "What if we put all that money that's going to the weapons contractors into education?" You know. Like, why can we not do that? You nope. sign this, no prob. Oh, time to make our name. Uh, should I make his name Titus or should I make it Eddie? I think we got to go with Che Guevara. Um, actually, I know what we'll name him. Anyone guess? Let's play guess the name in the chat. We got six people with us already, which is more than I expected. Thank you for for spending your your time with us. Um, uh, Alt Enter. I'll do that in a second. Can anyone guess what the name's gonna be? Um, based on the letter S. Just getting a little easier now. Long live <laughs> to Stalin. Makes sense that he would be the leader. He was the leader of the first Alrighty. socialist republic on earth. Take it, easy. Take it easy. You don't want to piss off Stalin. You look kids will get sent right to the gulags. Nothing Might be a silly question, but do you think there's any criteria for someone to call themselves a communist? That's a good question. I was thinking about that the other day. I think it's just someone who actually engages. I, I do think there's criteria, but I, I think it's... This is what I was thinking of the other day. I was thinking about this laying in bed. Like, it's not specific. Like, you have to support this, you have to support that, like... Obviously, anti-imperialism is a great litmus test. You know, what do you think of historical socialist countries or historical leaders like Stalin, Che, Mao? That's a great litmus test to see how much studying someone's actually done and how much bourgeois propaganda they bought into. Um, and sorry, but I'm going to get this full screen as soon as I can. I just don't want to mess anything up here. Um, I know we'll be able to soon. Um but for me, it's just someone who engages in, oh, they did the bow. It's just somebody who engages in revolutionary organizing and reading of revolutionary theory. Because once you take that leap and you start calling yourself a communist, right, there's various stages of development and there's various like liberal ideas that you have to unlearn. But if you engage in revolutionary organizing and you engage in reading revolutionary theory, you will unlearn them, right? You will eventually um, get a better grasp on Marxism, get a better grasp on the class struggle and start seeing the world through that lens rather than seeing the world through a more liberal identity politics based lens or anything like that. Um, My dad must have been his biggest fan. I knew how sad he'd be. Heck, we all were that day. Zanara, Sorry, we're missing some story. I went running straight back home. Um, talking about Jack all night. My dad and I never talked. So, about whoa, didn't mean to reminisce, folks. Anyway, ten years later, the Jack Memorial Cup tournament. The is Jack today. Memorial Cup. The two teams that have won. Um, because as long as you're like learning, gosh, I gotta get through these children. Hey, get out of my way, people. Hey, let 
Um, mm. As long as you're reading and you're organizing, as Che said, you'll be forged in the struggle, be forged in the socialist struggle. Um, and you'll learn and you'll improve from that organizing and from that reading of theory. But if you're someone who calls yourselves a, yourself a communist because it's a social thing, right? Because you like being part of like, holy crap, those graphics are amazing. Because you like being part of like a socialist communist social group on the internet. Like that's not a real communist for me, right? Or people who exclusively talk about identity politics or... You know, people who consider themselves a leftist before a communist, um, people who see the world really through a liberal lens more so than a revolutionary Marxist lens, um, but aren't trying to read theory and organize and, and learn and change and grow. Um, I think that's like pseudo communism. Let's see how I can get this to full screen. Holy cow, we got nine viewers in here playing Final Fantasy with us. Let's go. Hey, chat and Eddie. Hello, Tatiana. Bust down, Tatiana. Okay, now we. I really got to figure out how to get this in full screen. We got nine, excuse me, nine viewers. Uh, that ain't it. That ain't it. This is my Steam chat. Um, anyone know how to do it? Hello, everyone. Welcome to all the new people in the chat. Let me know if you have discussion topics, questions, comments, concerns, political stuff you want to talk about. Um, whatever you want. I'm just trying to figure out how to go full full screen right now while we watch this Blitzball game. Oh no, Xanarkin's getting blown up. This looks like the bombing of Yugoslavia in 1999. NATO must be attacking. Hey Eddie, is the Youth League for students up to a certain age? Yeah, it's... I think it's like anyone who's in there. I think the youth league can even include undergrad kids, like uh, people who haven't gotten their bachelor's yet, um, age 18 through 22. But yeah, you can be as young as you want. Like Yanis Iqbal, uh, maybe he started in the youth league. No, I don't think he is because his work is so good. But he was like 15 when he started writing for us. And he's one of the most like – He's been published on our website almost more than anyone else, and he's published a lot of the best stuff that we have. Um, all right, let me figure out how to freaking uh, go full screen. I'm, this is so frustrating. Um, you gotta teach me how to pause. Oren, what are you doing here? I named our character Stalin, by the way, so. Um, That just had to happen, you know. I just really wish I could go full screen right now. I just got to talk to this creepy little kid instead. Uh, but yeah, we if you want to write in the youth league, like the point of the youth league is to let good articles be published from younger folks, um, from young communists. But it's also to give them a place to develop, right? Like we're much less critical with the youth league um, articles that we get. Like we'll publish um, not pretty much anything. It has to be good and we'll edit it. But, you know, we'll we're much more likely to publish youth league stuff than we are likely to publish. Um, to publish, uh, all right, the, the barrier or the standard isn't as high. That's the word I'm looking for. The standard isn't as high for the quality of the youth league content because we recognize that younger people are younger and, you know, 
are still working on developing their writing and editing skills. And um, we want to have the youth league available. We call it sin, sin. Uh, we want to have the youth league available for people um, to develop to learn, to grow in their writing abilities and skills. Um, should I be doing a Marxist analysis of Final Fantasy X right now? I don't know what sin would be. I think this game is anti-religion in some ways. Um, I'm not positive, but... Oh, we're getting attacked by sin. Man, we do not know how to fight yet. He's just trying to, like, slap him. Take the sword. This boy can't even carry a sword. Hit those things. There you go, getting a stance. Getting your wrestling stance. Hit him now. Give him the sauce. All right, our first fight. These ones don't matter. We cut through them. Okay. Oh, that was good damage. I don't know if we start at this high of a level when the actual game starts, once we get out of the tutorial. I bet you I'll learn how to make it full screen when we get out of the tutorial. I know that. This isn't going to help. You think these games are a part of the military industrial complex? Am I aiding capitalism by buying games from Steam? I don't care. I'm too tired after wrestling practice. I need some way to turn my brain off and have fun in between practices. You can only sleep for so long. Dang. This thing be looking creepy. This thing look like John Bolton. All right, John Bolton. It's time that you take on Stalin. Get out of my town. We could bring back the gulags, the Stalinist gulags for John Bolton. Most definitely. Most definitely. Oh, we got our overdrive attack, Bushido. We're going to kill all these things. Oh, I forgot. You got to do this. S, B, X, C. I get it? Did I get them all? Overkill. Yeah, I did it. Ooh, so good. Um, someone was saying earlier that Lockheed Martin just signed a new contract with the U.S. government. Oh, we're going to have to do it again here. We're going to have to time this right. Let me focus. Uh-oh. Got it. Let's go. Someone was saying Lockheed Martin just sent a new multi-billion dollar contract with the government. and Their profits have gone up in absurd amounts since the war in Ukraine started. Um, oh, and the other piece of news I heard today from Dan Kovalik, who, like I said, just got back from the Donbass. Do we have potions? So just uh, Dan Kovalik, cool professor, um, wrote a book about Venezuela, has written stuff about Nicaragua, um, just got back from the Donbass. He said that the shellings of the Kiev regime on their own people in the Donbass, so this is a government firing javelin missiles and weapons they're getting from the United States on their own people in eastern Ukraine. Um those attacks have increased, They've gotten worse uh, since Kovalik has left. So, you know, with the Russian attack, 
designed to stop Ukraine from shelling their own people in the Donbass region. Ukraine's response has been to shell more people in the Donbass region. It makes sense because at the same time, the Lugansk People's Republic and the Donetsk People's Republic have been like very effective fighters. Right, their militaries have been very effective in the battle, and obviously they're fighting against the Kiev regime that's shelling them. But like, um, it all started with uh, the U.S. overthrowing a government, putting these Nazi ethno-nationalist groups in power, who then start killing their own people. And you got these freaking people who are waving around Ukraine flags, talking about free Ukraine. Free Ukraine, free Ukraine by installing a government that starts shelling their own people. That's how we bring freedom to Ukraine. We take the ethno-nationalists, we give them a bunch of NGO money, we give them a bunch of political support and coordination, um, and then they start shooting Ukrainian civilians, and you know that's that's how we bring freedom to Ukraine. You people are nuts. You're literally insane. Ooh, a save sphere. Maybe I can finally figure out how to go full screen, huh? How do I do this? Oh, here we go. Video. Full screen mode. Let's go. This. This isn't full screen. Dang it. Is that what I have to do? Change the resolution? Fudge is this. Why? <laughs> oh, I could use my mouse for this. Let me look up what resolution I'm at real quick. Oh, wait. I bet you that's what I have to change. Nope. What have I done? All right, one sec. Got to look up my resolution. Probably should have done this beforehand, huh? Ooh, 1920 by 1080. Okay. That ain't right. What the fudge is this? There we go. We did it. Woo! Holy crap. Yay, full screen mode. I'm amazing. And now I can't get over to what are you laughing at, old man? Lauren, let's get out Stream Yard. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Huh? And we got ten man. viewers. Woo! Final Fantasy X has some interesting themes to explore in its universe. Xanarkand was some late stage capitalism, lol, for sure. We're watching late stage capitalism get destroyed right now. Um, this is what's gonna happen in the US once we just piss off too many countries and they finally decide to intervene and depose our murderous oligarchy um they're just gonna start firing these little monsters who are gonna attack us um no but for real all the final fantasy games get pretty political this one in particular there was a huge like uh ign or one of the main um video game websites did like a huge video um, talking about how Final Fantasy is like anti-religion overall or how it's critical of religion overall. 
Um, got some interesting themes in it, some more adult themes in it. So uh, um, hopefully some good stuff to for us to talk about while we play. Um, I know we got to take this thing out. Uh, how do I get there? There you go. Um, but this is one of my favorite games. I used to play this with my cousin. It's one of those games. I think we're gonna like complete everything, including like the Blitzball games, because this is one of those games that I played as a kid and I wasn't that good at it and I didn't understand it that well. Um, so, like I I didn't get to do all the cool stuff in the game and I was always jealous of my older cousins they were better at it uh, but now i'm an adult i'm a grown man and i have my own twitch stream so i can do whatever i want the problem though is i don't really watch gaming streams so like i don't know what makes a gaming stream good um boom This is what's going to happen in the battle for water and the battle for oil that takes place between um, individuals living in America as the rich are hoarding it all. I don't know how that wasn't that good of an analogy or that good of a joke. Um, Maybe I'll start watching some Hassan Piker so I can better understand how to do good gaming streams. Dang. I must not be doing a good job because we just went from 10 to 5 people. <laughs> That's all right. I just got to stay consistent. Stay on my grind. Keep talking politics. This is your story. Just chuck him into the tornado. Oh my gosh. Here we go. That was cool. Hey. Hey. Yo, what up? Hey. What is up? Hello. Man, I'm sweating. I'm going to have to take this off. Oh, no, I'm floating around. X to go down. Go downtown. There's Orin. There's our buddy. Let's convert him to socialism quick. Wait, no, isn't that Jack? I thought about a lot of things. Like oh, it's a kid. Where I was, what I got myself into, I started to feel lightheaded and then sleepy. It was just a dream. I think I had a dream, a dream of being alone. I wanted someone. Oh, yeah, doesn't it turn out this is all a dream and then we have to go play bit Blitzball? Yeah, that's what's about. That's what's happening right now. We're in a dream that the world fell apart during the Blitzball championships. But then we wake up and we got to play the Blitzball championships. And then I can't remember what happens after that. Then maybe we actually get attacked or something. Been a while since I played this one. Anybody there? You played this before, first time. I've played it two or three times. Um, I've beaten it once. I know I beat it. I had played it as a kid. I had it on PS2 growing up, and then um, when I was in college, my senior year, I excuse me, re-downloaded it. Um, just to 
play it again and have something to do when I was training for wrestling, like I coincidentally am right now, um, which is kind of what gave me the idea to do these gaming streams again. Um, so I downloaded it again, played through it my senior year before nationals. I think maybe I beat the game after nationals was already over, after the season was over, but um, yeah. It's a fun game one of my favorite rpgs i don't know what my favorite rpg what are y'all's favorite rpgs mine are like ooh, we're back up to 10 people what up everyone my favorite rpgs i've ever played are like well i got started with kingdom hearts i have every kingdom hearts game um i really like this game final fantasy 10 i really like final fantasy 7 um i really like um Dragon Quest VIII is one I'm playing right now that I like. I don't know. I play through every game in history if that's what people want. I'll, de- I'll beat every Japanese role-playing game that there's ever been for socialism. Um, and I'll give a Marxist analysis of all of them, too. I feel like I only like JRPGs, role-playing games, because I'm just bad at video games. So I like games that are, like, slower and turn-based or strategy-based versus, like, platforming games and stuff are a struggle for me. Oop, don't get hit by a falling rock. Um, stream all you can. All Call of Duty campaigns. Let's consume propaganda. Yes. Who cares that Call of Duty is directly funded by the military industrial complex and the military industrial complex gets to control what's in every game. (laughs) Um, Some people tell me that they love Call of Duty. Um, They're like, you know, I don't care that it's funded by the military industrial complex or controlled by them. I love the game and it's fun and for sure, you know, and enjoy what you enjoy. You know, you don't have to um not do anything fun because you're a socialist but you should understand that you're being indoctrinated with messages directly from the u.s state department like directly um there's a law in hollywood i don't know how many people know about this but there's a literal law where if you use military gear in your piece of artwork in your movie then the military gets huge control over the script of that movie or the story of that piece of artwork So if you want your movie to be good, if you want it to be authentic, if you want to use real military gear to portray the U.S. military, uh um, you have to um, basically let the U.S. military co-write your movie. (laughs) Um, So, you know, you can enjoy games and you can enjoy entertainment, but also understand that entertainment media is one of the main ways that we get indoctrinated with imperialist pro-capitalist propaganda. Like one of the main ways. Um, Entertainment media is almost better than, you know, news media for them to do it because it's less obvious. People are less aware. People are less on their guard. Like, oh, I'm watching a movie. Better watch out for State Department propaganda. Like, you know, some people just think they're watching a movie actually watching state department propaganda am i supposed to beat this guy or not i'm pretty sure i beat this guy later on i'm probably just wasting all my potions right now cheers from brazil hello brazilian comrade thanks for joining us hope you're enjoying the stream 14 people in this stream this stream blowing up it's crazy everybody loved video games i guess oh we we lived we survived we definitely come back and beat that thing later, if I remember correctly. Oblivion 4 was the most impactful RPG I ever played. Huh. Wait, no. TES 4 Oblivion. What's that? Oh, The Elder Scrolls. It, was Oblivion the one that came after Skyrim or the one that came before Skyrim? I played Skyrim. That, that game was freaking awesome at, at the time. Some people were telling us when we were asking like what we should play for the gaming stream. Some people wanted Skyrim. Um, 
which I'm down. We could do a Marxist analysis of the Stormcloaks versus the Empire. Wish you slow death, Marxist piece of human garbage. Oh, you seem fun. Magnus Manhammer. The frying pan and into the you probably wish you could give me a slow death, but I would break you in half with my pinky I fingers. I was die in this place. Never played the campaigns of Call of Duty. Just play multiplayer. There you go. Yeah, that, that way you can just uh, ignore all the propaganda bits and enjoy the fun parts. I'm just terrible at shooters. I never got into them as a kid. My parents never let me just play video games all day, which was good. What is your problem, bro? Magnus Manhammer. He's sad. He's sad. He's sad and angry with his own life, so he goes on Twitch and threatens to kill people. That's all it is. There's a lot of people like that on the internet who are sad. They've never done anything with their lives. They've never done anything productive. They don't have any friends. They sit on Twitch, and they like literally threaten to kill people as if they would do anything, when really they're the softest people alive. <sighs> All right, we got to save. Save at the save sphere. I've never actually played Final Fantasy X-2. They made a X-2, and, like, you get it when you buy this game. So, like, the Steam version of uh, Final Fantasy that I got. Went in Tinder. Um... You also get 10 2 and I've played it like I used to have it as a kid. It's just weird. Like, it's a, not what you would expect. Um, and I've never... Oops, this is where we were just now. And I've never, like, taken the time to beat it. It's just not the same. Like, this game is a very straight-up, like, normal Final Fantasy game. Turn-based strategy... Um, good characters, cool characters, good story. And 10 2 is just like, it just feels like a side story. And it just feels like not the same game at all. The battle system is weird. Characters are like characters from this game or in other Square Enix games, but they're different. It's hard to explain. I just think it's weird. But maybe we can play it. <laughs> People want it. Ooh, another high potion, baby. All right, we're up here. I'm not really used to these controls yet, these directional controls. So I'll have to figure that out as we go. <laughs> That name, LMAO at that name, Trojan Magna Manhammer. <laughs> that is a pretty funny name, Magnus Manhammer. Except for, I feel like you got bullied with the name Magnus. Magnus! Is this where we're supposed to go? Probably. Ooh, examine. Thoughts on authoritarianism. Ooh, we found the flint. Uh, my thoughts are that you should read On Authority by Ingalls. I could read On Authority by Ingalls while I play this game. That's how short and how simple that book is. Anything else back here? It's one of the best ever written. Um, basically, Ingalls says that, you know, there's always going to be a state government is a monopoly on violence right that's how the government operates they they have armed bodies like the police like the military that enforce the authority of the government and they have a monopoly on violence they're allowed to throw people in jail they're allowed to use um guns violence to enforce the law that are supposed to be you know democratically agreed upon by the whole society this is how every state has i mean in a liberal democratic society we have that idea before you know, the state and the government were um, like the the rule of the king. The king had the monopoly on violence. But 
in a liberal democratic society, that's what it is. And Engels and Marx say, well, really, it's not a democracy. It's a dictatorship of the capitalist class because whatever class rules economically is going to come to control this state apparatus. They're going to control this um, ar these armed bodies and they're going to control the laws and they're going to control this body that holds a monopoly on violence. Um, so therefore who whatever class is ruling economically is the class that has the authority right they're the ones who get to exert authority and get to exert you know their own laws their own will so right now that's the capitalist class and we need to seize the state from them and make it a class of the workers and you know it's a dictatorship of the proletariat it's a different kind of state but it is a state that wields the authority of the workers against the bourgeoisie so after every revolution, there's what Marx calls the whip of counter revolution, right? After you have a revolution hey, wait, and wait. overthrow the ruling class in their state, um, the bourgeoisie, the ruling economic class is still going to be a, around and they're going to try and seize authority back. They're going to try and seize power back. Um, so the revolution needs to defend against that and continue to construct socialism, which is going to require the use of state authority it's going to require the use of that government to you know transition the means of production uh, into the hands of the workers and transition political power into the hands of the workers and that's going to require the use of excuse me the state authority all right so is that at face value authoritarianism that's what leftists and liberals claim Right, that any time the government did anything in Cuba, right, when the government in Cuba seized the plantations from the slave-owning plantation owners, that was authoritarianism because they took it from them using authority. It's like, yeah, they were plantation owners. They weren't just going to give up the plantations. <laughs> Some authority needed to be used. Um, so the Cuban workers seized the government from the gangster dic Batista dictatorship backed by the U.S., and they use the authority of the government to transfer economic power to the people and, you know, teach people to read, um, teach people, or, I mean, bring people health care, meet the people's basic needs um, in a way that the capitalists weren't in order to consolidate support of the people for that state, for the dictatorship of the proletariat. Um, so, yeah, that's how I look at authority. Uh, authoritarianism is always the authority of one class, of some class. This is one of my favorite characters in the game, even though I can't remember her name. She's so sick. The characters in this game are so cool. They're just so diverse. You got, like, this girl's, like, an engineer. She's from, it's, like, a different race of people who doesn't, they, like, don't believe in technology or something. Or No, no, the Albed believe in technology. And then there are people who don't believe in technology um, and they're always butting heads. But obviously, as a Marxist, we believe in the advancement of the productive forces. We believe in the advancement of technology and using technology. So we agree with the Albed or with uh, Riku. Sorry, Riku is her name. Uh, I just think she's a really cool character. Like the fact that you can make weapons and I don't know. He's in a cool character class. I like it a lot. I really like it. Let's keep throwing grenades at this stupid thing. You can't hit me. Um, so yeah, read angles on authority. Like I said, it's like three pages long. It'll explain everything I just said, but way better. Um, and it's based on an understanding of history. So that's like socialists, unlike so many other political groups, have a realistic view of the state. We actually have an idea of what the state is um, and how state authority is used and how the state authority needs to be wielded. Whereas the liberals are just like, we are against authoritarianism, full stop. We are against the use of authority, full stop. Like, oh, really? You're against the use of using state power, the government, to maintain capitalism. What do you call every imperialist war against a socialist country for the butt shot? <laughs> what do you call every imperialist war against a socialist country for the last 
70 some years. You guys don't use state authority. Okay. Gotcha. Right. So socialists are just more honest about it. Um, and the goal of socialism is to consolidate support of the people. Hey, so you can't just be dictatorial and authoritarian towards the people and still expect them to support your government and support the movement for socialism. Um, so. And thus ends my thoughts on authoritarianism. This is authoritarianism right here, huh? What are they doing in here? They better let me go and stop being so authoritarian. Did she just stab me? What is going on? What's going on here? Forcing liberal democracy on people with your army is fine. Forcing socialism. What's up, James Ed Smith? Familiar face here. Forcing socialism on them with your army, especially if it contains tanks, is very bad. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yes. Especially if it's in a place where, like, Nazis had just taken power. Like Hungary or uh, Finland when the Soviet yeah, Union got involved with those darn tanks and the term tankies was coined. Um, that's very bad. And the Soviets should be ashamed of themselves for getting rid of those truly authoritarian, anti-democratic, fascist governments um, who took hold of those countries. Um, authority on behalf of socialism is not okay. Right. Whatever. Only liberal democratic authoritarianism. Only when you overthrow the Ukrainian government and put in power um, ethno-nationalists who start shelling their own people. That is the only kind of authority that is okay. Anyone else is a tanky. Because the liberal democrats would never use tanks. These guys are trying to force me into the water. Okay, let me. That's nice of them to let me save first, you know. Appreciate you guys. You're going to make me walk in the plank. I'm going in. What do I do here again? Oh, they're going to teach me the sphere grid. Cool. This is how you level up in this game. Um, you just, these are all different skills and abilities and stat increases. <laughs> it's a cool way to do it. We get it. I know how to use it. I beat this game like 20 times. I get it. Holy shit, dude. This is the longest explanation of a, a level up system that's not that hard to understand. <laughs> you just go around the grid. Certain things have certain... Uh... Need to get... I freaking get it. 
big sphere grid. Yeah, thank you for explaining that. Okay. Oh my gosh, did I just hit explain it again? He said it in a different language. How was I supposed to know that? Oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> oh man, I thought Riga would look cooler. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Um, like based on her character in other games. Isn't Riku, like, Riku's in Final Fantasy X-2, but she's, like, a different person. Like, not the same Riku that she is in this. I don't understand the justice system is going to end up serving the ruling class, but I don't understand how it transitions away from that. Seems like you'd be replacing one ruling class with another. But socialism gets rid of the ruling economic class altogether, right? So Engel says there's always the authority of the the political authority is always the authority of the ruling economic class. But socialism makes it so the workers, the toiling masses, are the ones who own the means of production. So nobody's exploiting them, right? We're producing things in a way that benefits everybody, that benefits the community. So there is no dominant economic class once you, you know, the transition um, to socialism is complete. So the state is a state of the people. Um, the economy is an economy of the people. Uh, we move beyond the need for exploitation in the economy that's existed, you know, since slavery and the time of feudalism. Um, and, you know, these outdated modes of production that we no longer need anymore. We have the technology to produce enough for everybody and to play in an economy and produce in a way that's completely rational. Right? And at this point, capitalism is is holding us back from doing that and holding us back from um, reaching our true potential as a, a human species. But, you know, it also leads to an end of the political domination um, of one class over another. The end of exploitation does. Um, so ultimately, the authority of the socialist state or the communist state is just the authority of the people all together, the working class, which is the only class in society, right? There's no longer a class that doesn't work and only owns and lives off the exploitation of the workers, right? We all input labor into the system and then we all get out of the system um, equal labor to what we put in, which, you know, right now, if you look at the total amount of socially necessary labor in society, the toiling masses only get a tiny, tiny fraction of it. So, um, yeah, now I got to focus on my diving mission. The proletariat would write the laws and appoint proletarian judges. Absolutely. That's a big thing is the legal system. Um, is a huge part of the capitalist dictatorship um the dictatorship of capital that is our government because like citizens united which is essentially legalized political bribery was passed through the supreme court right the supreme court has been be is a way to get through some of the most dictatorial laws that only the ruling class wants that they can't even get through congress certainly couldn't get through a popular referendum of any kind but you got freaking nine dinosaurs on the supreme court who are ultimately beholden to the ruling class they'll legalize political bribery they'll rule that you know um corporations money is equal to speech and therefore they should be able to donate as much as they want to politicians um get that through the supreme court so in there's actually a concept for this in political science called juristocracy towards juristocracy is a good book that was written recently about like the way um the way that the courts are used to push things through and one of the things that trump did when he was president was appointed all of these conservative judges um to even the lower courts and Mitch McConnell was very happy about this and was one of the main Republican figures driving it. Um, 
yeah, it's bad for class struggle overall. If you have a bunch of judges who believe in freaking Ronald Reagan, neoliberal trickle down economics or whatever, um, and are beholden to corporations, obviously, obviously that's a bad thing. I'm so used to going to YouTube to watch you stream. I was so confused. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy the Twitch streams. Um, we just didn't want to put uh, gaming streams on YouTube because we want that content to be more professional. Um, versus Twitch, we feel can be more laid back, more of a hangout vibe. Just play video games and talk about politics and chill. Um not have to worry about making our content really high quality. I don't have to be like zoned in the entire time, locked in, especially when I'm doing streams in between wrestling while I'm training for wrestling because uh, um, cause I get tired because I only have so much energy I can expend in a day. Um, sometimes I just want to chill out a little bit. So it's the transitional period I fail to comprehend. I mean, yeah, that's one thing. There's a the, Everyone forgets that socialism isn't an overnight thing. It's a process of construction. right? So the worker sees political power, and then there's a process of transitioning the means of production and full economic control into their hands. Um, I don't go this way, do I? Um, so... In that process of transitioning political, I mean, in transitioning economic power, the workers need to hold political power and use the state, right? Use that state power um, to transition to a socialist economy, to transition um, to an economy without exploitation, like we were talking about earlier. And without state power, without the use of authority, um, there's going to be no way to do so. And it's just not realistic. Like imagine if there was an anarchist revolution tomorrow, um, the police would come just break it up. Right. The idea is we're going to have a decentralized revolution where we don't take power of the government or whatever. Uh, what is this? Um, we're just going to, we're just going to somehow magically rise up without using any violence or any kind of authority. And, you know, the bourgeoisie isn't going to try and kill us. Like the police would just come break up your revolution. They would just come say, no, you're not going to have this anarchist. Oh, I messed up. You know, you're not going to have this anarchist society. We decided we're not going to let you do this. Um, probably should have attacked there. Huh? Um, you need seize the government you need to seize state power and this is something that marx realized with like back after the paris commune after the paris commune happened the police basically just broke up what they were doing um or they failed to truly wrest power from the bourgeoisie marx says you know you can't just seize power of well this is where he invents the the concept of the dictatorship of the proletariat where he says you can't just seize power of the government you need to seize power of the government and break up the government and rebuild it as a worker state rebuild it as a state that actually um, puts power in the hands of the workers um, because the bourgeois state machinery the state machinery that enforces the dictatorship of the capitalist class um, wasn't meant uh, to actually be a democracy right it was meant as a tool of suppression so a socialist government needs to look completely different needs to be this dictatorship of the proletariat. So, you know, Marx and Engels always stood that understood that the workers would need to seize state power. Later, they refined that idea into the idea that they need to break up the ready-made state machinery and create a worker state power that looks different. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, state power needs to be seized. And anyone who tells you differently is just being naive. There's, I loved watching Blitzball. Blitzball is sweet. There's just so much more people on YouTube. That's why I do it when it's available. No hate to Twitch. Yeah, definitely. I don't blame people for that. I used to say I prefer people use Twitch, but now I don't care at all. Because, like, there's just more people on YouTube interacting in the chat. 
A Midwestern Mark gaming stream? Oh, crap. So many people are going to get confused by the new names, LOL. Absolutely. Um, I'm glad you enjoy the Midwestern Mark gaming stream. I'm glad you're pumped about that. Um, yeah, and by the way, our main character is named Stalin. I don't know if anybody noticed that or not, but uh, yeah. Fair play. Who's your favorite UFC fighter, fighter in general? If you really like Aaron Pico and Bellator or something. <laughs> I mean, I like Aaron Pico. I, I used to... Aaron Pico was in high school when I was in high school and I used to go to the same wrestling tournaments as him. So like when he fights, I definitely root for him. Uh, he's not like my favorite fighter. He hasn't done a whole lot in MMA yet. Um, he's accomplished more in wrestling and he has an MMA. I don't know who my favorite fighter is of all time. Probably George St. Pierre. Uh, he's just a really respectful and like good person on top of being a good fighter. And, um, he doesn't give a crap what Dana White says. He just does what's best for him. And he doesn't really care about the UFC as a company. He's like kind of screwed them over multiple times, which I love. Um, cause they just try and use him for as much money as possible. And he's recognizes it. So he's like, I'm just going to get what I want out of this company and then dip. Uh, so he's like my favorite Francis and Ganu's up there. He's been calling out the UFC. He, he demanded higher pay, not just for himself, but for um, all the fighters, which is, you know, like the most socialist thing an MMA fighter can do. Uh, so shout out to him for that. And he's getting attacked by the UFC for it. How do you think revolution is going to look in America? I have a hard time believing we'll be able to do something solely violent, at least in the beginning. The labor movement right now gives me a lot of hope. I think destruction of the Democratic Party would be a good move. If we could do an effective boycott of the Democratic Party, that would send a big message and obviously not going to win through electoral politics. That I agree that there needs to be some kind of boycott of the Democrats. Like, you know, we cannot keep caving to the Democrats. We cannot keep being like, you know, you better vote for our socialist candidate or we're not going to support you. And then they're like, you better support us. And we're like, OK, like we don't want to be mean like the Republicans. The Democrats are just as bad. And if you cave to them, you give up all your leverage. Um, you, you have no leverage over them if you're just going to cave to them and vote for their candidate anyways, no matter what. <laughs> Um, yeah, and people need to see that's not the answer. Um, I think what would like from a strategic point of view, uh, what would could really bring about like a, an upheaval or revolution would be some kind of military mutiny, where if, like a lot of military and former military people started getting educated about socialism and more educated about capitalist imperialism. Um, cause that's largely what happened in Russia, right? Russia is the one place, Russia is the example of an imperialist country that had a revolution. Um, uh, most of the countries, other countries were countries under the boot of imperialism who overthrew their governments and moved to build socialism. But, um, Russia was an imperialist country. They were one of the countries fighting over the colonies and or they were about to be one of the countries fighting over the colonies in World War I. And they had this revolution largely because a lot of the workers didn't want to go fight in World War I. They were tired of fighting in these stupid expansionist wars um, for the czarist monarchy. Um, the oligarchs uh not even the oligarchs, the feudal landlords and the rich and powerful in Russia. So they mutinied. They helped out the revolution. They sided with the Bolsheviks and the Bolsheviks went to them and educated them and helped them. Whereas in the U.S., you got freaking leftists who are like, no, F all the troops. You know, every single troop is, should die um, a painful death. We hate all the troops. The troops are the least brave people ever. Like, yes, I understand the disdain for people supporting U.S. imperialism, for sure. But we need to get those people to recognize how bad the government is if we want to have a real revolution, if we're thinking strategically about revolution. Um, and those people are screwed over, too. Right? Those are people who were in their low-income high school, and some recruiter said, here, come over here and hit some pull-ups, um, and then join the military. And then you hit 10 pull-ups, and they're like, wow, you're really strong. This is what happened to all my wrestling friends. You should join the military. You know, you get free college and get all these benefits, and we'll never deploy you. Probably not. 
and they do. Um, these are people who were lied to and then shipped off to, to serve the U.S. Empire. So, you know, attack the systems. Don't attack the individuals. This is unrealistic until you equip Stalin with a comically large spoon instead of a sword. <laughs> you bet. In Dragon Quest VIII, which is a game by the same people, you can equip like a giant fork. Um, so maybe I'll get that so that Stalin can eat all of the grain. And who are you guys anyway? Who are you guys anyways? Are you Kulaks? To Gulag. We're all bad, can't you tell? Oh, I should have turned the music up. I don't even know what an Albert They keep is. showing her cartoon you butt. <laughs> you guys like that cartoon <laughs> ass? <laughs> I'm not even considering voting for Biden Star anymore. I live in Texas, so I was considering it, even though there's no way a Dem will win Texas right now. But between the Willow Project, the rail strike in East Palestine, the Ukraine war, ending food stamp programs, amongst all the other things, I'm done. Hell yeah, me too. Do you remember anything me too, less cassowaries. I'm freaking not voting for another Democrat ever again. Screw them. Like I said, like we have more leverage if we say, no, we're not so voting for you. There was you know, maybe Americans. support some socialist and policies right there, for once in our lives. Maybe support and minor welfare programs and for workers and all go out and vote for you. Came to mind. But until and then, quit telling me how much better you are than the Republicans and trying to shame me into voting for you. Did I Currently trying people to at least encourage a primary, which is crazy how reluctant people are for what even that. Saying? True. True. Although I'd love to see yeah. someone do a primary that's not Marianne Williamson. Be I'll run for president. Let's go. I feel like I feel see more and more military people being leftist and socialist for sure. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is reach out to them. Like I said. Um, you sure? Yeah. There is no Xanarchin There's anymore. There's no Xanarchin anymore. Sin destroyed it a thousand years ago. Sin so destroyed it a thousand years ago. So no one plays bitball there. Hmm, we've transported a thousand years into the future. Um, what? what do you mean? Yeah, I mean, there's more and more people reaching out to him, too, though. Like, I'm telling y'all, there. it's not that hard. I, I've told this story so many times. I got almost our whole wrestling team, which is traditionally, you know, traditionally a conservative sport i got them all to caucus for bernie you know like half of them to caucus for bernie and a lot of the ones who did were ones who got tricked into joining the military for free college um so it's worth it to reach out to them Seventy-seven percent of young Americans are unfit to enter the military. LOL. I kind of believe it, but like, dude, the freaking the test is not that hard. Like the physical test and especially the mental test is not that difficult. Um, yeah. Okay, y'all. I'm probably gonna end it here for today. Oh, I ended it right as we got 18 people in in here watching us. Um, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to get ready for wrestling practice. I have to drive an hour. Um, tomorrow, maybe I'll do another gaming stream after after our regular stream um, that's on YouTube and stuff. I'm also going to probably make a... I am going to make a YouTube channel called like Eddie Liger Games or Midwestern Mark Games so I can upload these. Because um, this is going to be like a walkthrough because we started this game from the beginning today. Um, so it's going to be like uh, a playthrough not really a walkthrough, more of a playthrough where we just talk politics and stuff. But yeah, looking forward to that. Um, thanks for hanging out with me, trying out this new kind of content. Um, we'll be doing it pretty much every day this week. Uh, yeah, subscribe for more. Much love. Midwestern Marks, solidarity, everyone.